You cut off, Dennis! I hang out in bars. Often. Probably more often than I should, truth be told. More specifically, I hang out in old man bars. The kinds of places that open at 10 a.m. <laughs> places where the toilet seats went MIA back in the Reagan administration, and for some inexplicable reason, Wheel of Fucking Fortune is always playing on that ancient piece of shit television. The one that always goes all static every time the cash register rings. Old man bars are a lot like Starbucks. They're all a little different, but they're all intrinsically the same. And I like that familiarity. <laughs> you cut off! That was the first thing I heard a few weeks ago when I walked into my old man bar du jour, Hank's Saloon. And given the lush... Give up for Hank's. And given the lush timbre of the speaker's voice, I knew that it was Jeannie, the day shift bartender. Jeannie is cut from a cloth that you don't see much of anymore. Ever since downtown Brooklyn became Locavore Bougelin. Jeannie's accent and attitude are as tough as the fading tattoo on her left tit, a cross between Bay Ridge and Biker Bitch, and in case you haven't figured it out, yeah, I dig this old lady. <laughs> you cut off for the day! And yes, she said day, not night. Time to go home, Dennis! Dennis has a jaw that was probably weak before he lost 90% of his teeth. And while I have no idea what time he arrives each day, I know that he's usually cut off by 6 p.m. He sits at the bar all afternoon, unironically drinking can after can of Pabst Blue Ribbon, each of which he pours into a plastic cup before placing the empty can into a bodega bag that he keeps beneath his stool. He cashes in his cans at the nearby supermarket each night before weaving his way home to the shelter with a few extra nickels jingling in his pocket like sleigh bells on an endless Christmas Eve. Time to go home, Dennis, Jeannie repeated. And Dennis scooped up his bag of cans and said, Okay, Jeannie, but I expect a kiss from you tomorrow when I come in. And as the door slammed shut behind him, he shouted over his shoulder, Have a good night, Charlie. What Dennis didn't seem to realize was that Charlie had passed away the week before. In fact, it was common knowledge to everyone at the bar except for Dennis, who either couldn't or wouldn't accept the fact that his friend Charlie was gone. In the few months that I'd known Charlie, it was pretty clear that he had some kind of terminal respiratory problems. Uh, problems that didn't prevent him, however, from smoking cigarettes and drinking away every afternoon while keeping vigilant watch over the stained and slanted pool table. Or perhaps those problems encouraged such behavior, it's too late now to tell. He learned every patron's name, no matter how infrequently they crossed the threshold. He'd buy Hallmark cards at the Walgreens across the street and would write poetry in them for the ladies that he called his girlfriends. And yeah, if you were shooting a game of pool, odds were as strong as the cue ball was chipped that he would be critiquing your game after every single fucking shot. And it wasn't malicious. He honestly wanted everyone in there to become a better pool player and to have someone to talk to. Charlie eventually succumbed to whatever it was that he had. A neighbor found Charlie dead in his apartment. And sadly, Charlie had no friends or relatives to claim the body. The only thing that came close to family for Charlie was the bar. So the bar staff and the owners did what family would do. They claimed the body. The fucking bar made the funeral arrangements and held a memorial service on a rainy Sunday afternoon. At the bar, of course. <laughs> I went to the service, and as people got up to speak, it became clear that they didn't even know each other, much less Charlie. But they all said the same thing. Charlie was a good man, and I liked shooting pool with him. No original thoughts or sentiments, just bunch of lonely old men being lonely together. See, that's the problem. Most people think that if they're not alone, they won't be lonely, which is bullshit. Being alone becomes loneliness only if you're sad about being alone. And it's very easy to be lonely when you're surrounded by people. Somewhere around the age of nine, I learned how to enjoy being alone. I love being alone. 
<laughs> and I'm going to tell you my secret. Not all of you are cut out for this technique. You strike me as a bunch of hip cats, an adaptable lot, well suited for the fast pace in New York City, but some of you may lack the dedication, the emotional and intestinal fortitude required for the Dr. Gross cure for loneliness, which I'll give to you all now, free of charge. You can thank me later if it works for you. It's very simple. One rule. Hate as many things as you can. <laughs> If you can do that, like me, <laughs> you too can become a rage addict, an equal opportunity bigot, a bodhisattva of brutality, a man or woman who won't take shit from the world because the world is shit. And in this town, it's easy. Just look around. You've got slow walkers and loud cell phone talkers and people who look for their metro card while standing in the turnstile. Umbrellas that are wide enough to shelter a Guatemalan family of five. People who take the elevator to the second floor. People who know the DJ. People who are on the list. Places that have a list. Clipboard kids who want just a moment of my time to save the lesbian dolphins from hydrofracking. All 200 people waiting online in the rain for a fucking Jake Shack cheeseburger. That motherfucker who always wants to hand me a flyer for a barber shop. $12 cigarettes. Money slush covered in dog piss in the winter. Rotting trash covered in people piss during the summer. Those two weeks a year that we call spring and fall. Rats, roaches, assailants, muggers, rapists and cops, but I repeat myself. The neighbors upstairs, the neighbors downstairs. CBGB's gone. The Chelsea Hotel, gone. The limelight is now a fucking flea market, and the simple fact that every place I used to buy drugs in this neighborhood has a luxury condo! Hate everything. <laughs> Love yourself. <laughs> and if you can do that, being alone will become a thing of ecstasy, nirvana, and satori, all rolled up into one giant bliss burrito. You owe it to yourself. As a New Yorker, it's your fucking right. Just be sure to always tip the bartender. <laughs> Charlie, be the first one to tell you. You never know when you might need a bartender. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>